the song and introduce the others, amen, none other than our very own Pastor Eli Porter, amen. But before we receive Pastor Porter, we have a solo selection from Sister Journey Baker, amen. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? How many glad to hear the word on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just praise the Lord just a little bit before we hear the word on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You fight on, oh, you fight on. You fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, keep your sword in your hand. You fight on, you fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on. Keep your sword in your hand. You fight on, oh, 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 keep your sword in your hand. You fight on, oh, you fight, oh, you fight on. You fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, keep your sword in your hand. You fight on, you fight on, you fight on, oh, you fight on, you fight on. Keep your sword in your hand. You fight on, oh, you fight on. One of these old mornings won't be long. You look for me and I'll be gone. Keep your sword in your hand. You fight on, oh, you fight on, oh, you fight on. Oh, you fight on. Keep your sword in your yeah yeah you fight on oh 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 keep your sword in your hand keep your sword in your hand Keep your sword in your hand. You fight on, oh, you fight on. Everybody, everybody clap those hands. Come on, if you love the Lord, clap your hands and give him a praise. You know, we appreciate the Lord today. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God praises. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice. Amen and be glad. Amen. Look at somebody and say, is that all you got? Uh, hallelujah. Amen. You know, I realize that there are several people that have, in fact, um, laid out their clothes to um, go to work this morning. Some people laid out their clothes to uh, go to church. And some people laid out their clothes just to go hang out today. Amen. But they wasn't fortunate enough to live to see today. And this is why you should be grateful. We should be grateful that the Lord Almighty has allowed us to see another day. Amen. 
Uh, sometimes we take life for granted. Sometimes we live a life like God owes us something. I'll be honest with you, he don't owe you nothing. Uh, you're here because of him. And him alone, amen. You know, sometimes we get into categories to where we think that we've arrived and we've made it like we don't need God. Let me tell you something. The reason why you're breathing right now is because of him. Amen. And we ought to give him thanks and praise because of that. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for, amen, the leaders of Church of God, the Bible way, my pastor and father, Apostle C.A. Coward. Amen. To the presider, Bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod, and to our district overseer, Overseer Kevin Williams, amen, and to our district elder, district elder Andrew Johnson, and to all of the men of God that make up our great district, and to every one of you that's here today, and to our first-time guests, God bless you. We appreciate you coming to be with us today, amen, and thank God for our viewers that could not make it today, that are viewing live. We appreciate you as well, amen. You may be seated. I wish I could teach, amen, and finish what I was teaching on last week about uh, Jesus being the God of the universe, amen. And people have a hard concept of understanding that Jesus, in fact, is the God of the universe. He is, in fact, God Almighty, amen. And there is no little Jesus on the side of a big God. There's no little Holy Ghost on the side of a big God. In fact, Jesus is the big God, amen. And I know that it's hard for people to understand or even perceive the concept of who God is, but you have to, in fact, be spiritual. Amen. That's not the message that the Lord gave me this morning, but I do want to point out that we must remember that Jesus, in fact, is God. Amen. And there is no God beside him. There's no God near him. Amen. There's no God above him. Amen. There are several gods beneath him. Amen. But there's no God above him. Amen. He is the Lord. The Bible says that there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. And that Father, in fact, is Jesus. Amen. Jesus played the role son, but yet he was still the Father. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I, I, matter of fact, let me get Isaiah 9 and then I'm going to move forward. I want to show you this real quickly. Jesus, in fact, is the God of the universe. Amen. And because we know this, it ties into my message. Amen. The message today is dancing before the king makes him move. Amen. Dancing before the king that makes him move. Jesus is not a little king. Amen. He is. You know, there's kings all over. Amen, Mike. In the volume right for me. There's kings all over. This is why the Bible talks about kings of kings. Amen. In fact, you're a king. You're a king. You're a king. I'm a king. He's a king. We're kings, but God, amen, is the king of all kings. There are kings that exist, but Jesus, in fact, is that God that's the king of all kings. And I'll prove it from one verse very simply. Read this, uh-huh. For unto us, uh-huh. A, a child is born. And unto us, uh -huh. a son is given. Now we got a child born and the son being the given, uh-huh. Read. And the government. And the government. Shall be upon his shoulders. The government going to be upon the child's shoulders. Uh -huh. Read. And his name shall be called Wonderful. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. Counselor. The mighty God. Wait one minute. The son is the mighty God. <laughs> the child yes. is the mighty God. Read, uh-huh. The everlasting father. Wait one minute. The beginning of the verse says that he's a son and a child, but yet he's still the everlasting father because yes. the Bible talks about God being in Christ. Yes. So God was in the son, amen, as the son on the earth. Furthermore, go down to the Ephesians, uh, Philippians chapter 2 real quickly. Let me say this, and then we're going to move because it's good to know why we are dancing before the king that we're dancing to. 
amen and if you really know how to make his hand move and how amen to amen allow God to do what we need to do we understand how to dance before him and there has been so many restrictions on how to praise God and people sit in the church and look real dignified like they ain't supposed to move to the music or to the sound amen but let me tell you something when we all was in the world hey, y'all ain't saying nothing we used to go to the club we didn't have to learn and in fact we didn't even have to have rhythm amen Every Everybody was just moving to the beat of the devil. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, let me get you this. Read Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 3. Uh-huh, read. Ephesians. Ephes Philippians, I'm sorry. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 3. Uh-huh. Let nothing uh -huh. be done through strife or vain glory. Yes. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Uh-huh. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Uh -huh. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Who being in the form of God. Jesus was in the form of God. Oh my God. <laughs> Lord, help us in here today. All right, he's being in the form of God, just like you got water bottles, you got water in a gallon, you got water in 16 ounce bottles, you got water in six ounce bottles, you got water in four ounce glasses, but it don't change what the substance is. The substance is still water, it's just in a different form. Lord, I wish I had the right church with me. It's the same boy having them bottles over there. Let me see them right there, Dana. Hand me those. Amen. You got a bottle here. That's uh, 25.3 fluid ounces. This is a bottle. And that bottle there is, amen, 20 ounces. What, what the ounces on that one? And on that bottle, amen, you got 33.8 ounces. It's a different form. In fact, you can go to a ditch and see water. You can go to the sea and see water. You can go to the ocean and see water. You can go to the river and see water. But in fact, it still remains the same substance. And that substance is water. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout glory in here. Uh, just because of the position, it doesn't change what it is. Just because he was manifested in the flesh, amen, it did not say that it was not God. Who being in the form of God, read. Thought it not robbery. Thought it not robbery. To be equal with to God. To be what? Equal. Equal with God. There's no man on the face of this earth has ever been equal with God except for himself. My God. Lord have mercy. You know that number one is the only number that every other number need, but that number one don't need no other number but the number one. Lord have mercy. If you look at five, five need one. You look at three, three need one. You look at 17, 17 need one. But when you look at one, one only needs one. Bible says down there, hey amen, I'm going to move forward. This is the thing that's getting me excited here. Yes, Bible says down there in Deuteronomy, they call it the Shema. The Bible says, hero is with the Lord, thy God is one Lord. So we can't pluralize God and make him into no trinity and no try this and three this and three that because it's just one. Somebody shout hallelujah. When we make him into three, then we got to figure out who we're going to pray to at night. You're going to pray to the Father in the morning, pray to the Son in the midday, and then pray to the Holy Ghost. And Y'all ain't saying nothing. All right. Form of God. Thought of not robbery to be equal with God. Read. But made himself. But made himself. Of no reputation. This is why people did not understand who God was when he was in the flesh. Because he didn't make himself of no reputation. He wasn't going around telling people, I'm God. Sit down. I'm God over here. <laughs> now, sometimes when people was getting on Jesus' nerve, he said, now, nah, you better cool it now. Because before Abraham was, I, I am. am. Yes, Meaning sir. that I was there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. In essence, when you do the dissecting of the scripture, he was saying, I was the one before Abraham yeah. meeting. I was the one. See, people don't know that Jesus, amen, he got in a body in the Old Testament. People don't understand that he appeared as a man in the Old Testament. That's why people always make him into three. Because if we make him into, if every time God appeared or manifests or put himself in a body, we have to have a bunch of bodies. My God. 
Then we have to have a bunch of gods everywhere. Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. They have to have another, a different God for every day of the week. Amen. Abraham said, amen, or before, but Jesus said before Abraham was, I am, meaning that when Abraham stood there, the I am was in front of him. You remember, now Jesus, in fact, when you study your scriptures, I ain't got time to go there, in the book of Genesis, it talks about God coming down in a body, eating lunch with Abraham. <laughs> People don't read their Bible, though. That's why they limit God, amen, to this Trinitarian or three people thing. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How many Lucifers is there? It's only one Lucifer. What we need three gods for one Lucifer for? That's right. All right, let me get out your way. Read, uh-huh. And took upon him. And took upon him. The form the of form, a servant. The what? The form. form. So he was a form of God, but also a form of a servant. servant. Read. And was made and in the likeness. Made and was made in the likeness of, of what? Men. men. So God was made a man. My God. Amen. Lord, I wish I had the right That's church good. with me. He was made a man. The Bible talks about him being uh, made of a woman. So we can't say that he was always existed as the son in heaven because if that's the case, amen, then, then, then the Bible will be lying in God's when we say he was made of a woman. <laughs> Read, uh-huh. And being found in, a, in fashion as a man. Found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. And became obedient uh -huh. unto death. Unto death. Even the death of the cross. Uh -huh. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. Exalted him. And given him a name which is above every name. Now, wait a minute. Now, if this is just a mere man, how does he have a name above every name? Amen. Now, if we know God, in fact, is not a name. God is a position or considered a deity. But God, you say, well, what's, what's God's name? People say, oh, God is his name. <laughs> no, nah, God is not a name. Read, uh-huh. That at the name of Jesus. At the name. Now, this is the tricky part. I got to move forward here. At the name of who? Jesus. Jesus. Uh huh. Every knee should bow. Every knee has to bow. Uh huh. Of things in heaven. Wait a minute. If God throne is in heaven, then that means that God got to bow down to the Son. Uh -huh. Lord, help us in here. <laughs> He said that every, every knee shall bow of things in the heavens. So everything that's in heaven got to bow to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Now, if Jesus is just a man or just a son, you telling me that God got to bow down to his own creation? <laughs> that's just like Steve Jobs bowing down to the Apple phone. Right. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Read, uh-huh. And things in earth. And things in the earth. And things under the earth. And things under the earth. And that every tongue. And every tongue. Should confess. Going to confess. That Jesus Christ. Now you're telling me that every tongue. He talk about every knee. Now every knee that's in the heavens. Every knee that's in the heavens must have a tongue too. So the knees that's in heaven and the tongues in heaven still got to say that Jesus is Lord. My God. And the Bible said that there's one Lord. Uh, Ephesians 4 4 and I got to move forward we got to dance before the king today somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah Ephesians chapter 4 there is one body uh, uh -huh. and one spirit one spirit even as ye are called and one hope of your calling uh -huh. one Lord one Lord y'all see that faith. Lord that L is uppercase yes it is one Lord one faith. One faith. One baptism. Uh huh. One God. One God. There's only one God. There's not three gods. So there's just one God. And not only is there a God, but he's a father of everything. Yes. Got to give you this last scripture. Then we're going to dance before him. Go down there. My God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go down to the book of Luke. Chapter 1. Now, I have to have a question. If there's one spirit, and the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 4, 24, the Bible said God is a what? Spirit. God is a spirit. So now, the Bible said God is a spirit. 
What is the Holy Ghost? Got to be a spirit too, right? All right, so if God is a spirit, the Holy Ghost is a spirit, we're going to have a problem in this scripture here if we don't have the correct understanding and know how to harmonize scripture. All right, read, uh huh. Luke chapter 1 and verse number uh, 28. Uh -huh. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, Blessed art thou, thou among women. Uh -huh. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Uh -huh. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. Uh -huh. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Uh -huh. And he shall reign over the house of, of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The Holy Ghost. And the power of the highest. Now the Bible said that the Holy Ghost is going to come upon him. Uh -huh. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Uh -huh. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. All right. Now, he's called the Son of God, but the Bible said the Holy Ghost is going to come on him. Now go to Matthew chapter uh, number 1 and 20. All right, read. Uh -huh. 1 and 20. But while he thought on these things, while he thought on these things, behold, behold the angel of the Lord appeared unto him uh -huh. in, a dream, in a dream, saying, saying Joseph, uh -huh. thou son of David, yes. fear not uh -huh. to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her, that which is conceived in her, is of the Holy Ghost. That which is conceived in her is of who? The Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost got Mary pregnant, but they're saying it's the Son of God. <laughs> So if the Holy Ghost and God isn't the same person, then we got a problem with the scripture. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got somebody say, I'm glad I know who the king is. I'm glad do I know who the king is. Now I want you to go down to Matthew chapter 14. Something happened, and I want to use this scripture to Amen. Show you why we ought to dance before the king. And dancing before him makes a move. Amen. I, I like to say this because, amen, there was a point in my life, amen, when I was in the world. Amen. I probably got this, I'm probably the only one that got this testimony. Because y'all looking deep like y'all ain't never been in the world. But there was a point in my life where I was in the world. Amen. I, I grew up, did grow up in the church. Amen. I broke away from the church and I wanted to try some new stuff. Amen. So I was in the club and it felt so weird. It looked like everybody was looking at me. That I didn't know who they were. They, it just looked like they, were, they, they got their eyes on me like I wasn't supposed to be in there. <laughs> but when I was in the club, amen, I used to make sure I was dancing because I wanted to have a good time. Oh and amen, to be honest, in order for my dance skill to get a little better, amen, I used to go down there to the bartender. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I know this. I'm the only person with this testimony. None of y'all ain't been in the club. None of y'all ain't ever drink nothing before. But I'm talking about me. Amen. I would go down there and visit that bartender. Amen. And get a little something to drink. Amen. I hated it, but I just wanted to be cool and be with everybody else. It looked like everybody else was having a good time and dancing. Amen. Because they had a shot of something. Lord, have mercy. I'm, I, I, I want to walk this thing here. Now, I would go down there and... When I get a little shot of it, it just seemed like I get to move a little better. That's what it looked like. Hey, man, it seemed like everything starting to look different because I took a shot of something. Amen. Yes, hey, and because I don't care what y'all say, but because Satan has a kingdom, he's a king too. Yes, Lord, y'all ain't saying, oh, they got quiet now. Yeah, I, I'm acknowledging it. Satan, in fact, the world's kingdom is Satan's. And can I be honest with you? God said, amen, that the kingdom of this world is not of his. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
And so when I was in the club, I realized, amen, later down in my years, I realized that while I was dancing, I was dancing before the king. I just wasn't dancing before the king of kings. And so in my, amen, uh, mischievous behavior at the club, amen, every now and again I get another shot just to make me move a little better. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you this because, amen, just how you felt in the club and you took shots there, amen, the Bible compares Jesus to a drink. And every now and again, while you're praising God, amen, you ought to praise him like you had a drink. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Lord, I wish I had about 25 of y'all with me. And so, amen, I realized that I, myself, cannot have a better time in the world than I'll have right here in God's house. I know, amen, sometimes people will teach you and tell you, amen, that when you go to church, you're supposed to look dignified. Amen, your shirt, amen, supposed to look real good and your, 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 your jacket got to be buttoned up real nice and keep your shoes shining. But I'm here to let you know, when you come to the house of God, you ought to lose your mind in him. You ought to praise him like it's your last time. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And I realized, amen, in this specific, uh, specific text here, amen, there was a young lady and she was dancing before the king, amen, and it moved. I want you to look at this. This thing blew my mind here. Matthew chapter 14, amen. I, the way she was dancing, amen, it was a worldly dance. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. And she was dancing before the king Herod, amen. 14th chapter, first verse, read, uh huh. And at that time, Herod, Herod, the Tetrarch, uh -huh. heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, this is, this is John the Baptist. Uh -huh. He is risen from the dead. And therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Uh -huh. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. Uh -huh. For John said unto him, it is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. Yes. But when Herod's birthday was kept. When Herod's birthday came on round. The uh, daughter of Herodias uh -huh. danced before them. She danced before him. And pleased Herod. And it pleased the king. Lord have mercy. Now, I don't want to get into the dance that she was dancing in, My but. God. Amen. They, in fact, was having a little party down there, and she was dancing for him. Now, watch this next verse. Uh -huh, read. Whereupon uh -huh. he promised with an oath. He promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she to would ask. To give her whatsoever she would ask. And she. Ah, wait a minute right there. The Bible says that Herod told her that she could get whatever she want by dancing before the king. Now, I don't know if you ever read your Bible, but the Bible, amen, tells us if we abide in him and his word abide in us, we could have whatever we want. And hallelujah, I don't know if you further read your Bible where it talks about, amen, God inhabiting the praises of his people. So in essence, sometimes your praise can get you just what you want. I wish I had a few of y'all with me. And so what happens is, this is why Satan, in fact, attacks praise. Satan wants you to sit there and look crazy while the praise service is going on. Satan wants you to make you feel like you're uncomfortable when you lift your hands. In fact, let me tell you something. Satan got so in control that he got people praying with their hands closed. Let me let you know something. God never wanted you to pray like this. The Bible said, God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. The Bible told us, amen, that when the men pray, they ought to lift up holy hands. So when Lord, have mercy. See, this is a sign of being bound. And you know everybody, even with your text messages, when your text message, you got prayer hands like this. When you go down there to the mall, you got prayer hands. God don't want you to pray like this. When God wants you to pray, he wants your hands lifted because that's a sign of victory. I wish I had a few of y'all. And I just need 10 of y'all to shout hallelujah. Don't you know, every time you hold your hands together, amen, that's a sign of I'm bound. 
around but when I just lift my hands up it's a sign of victory when I lift my hands up it's a sign of praise and Satan wants you to believe amen that you're supposed to sit in church amen with your hands looking pretty Satan wants you to feel like amen you're supposed to sit like this in the house of God but when you come into the house of God you're supposed to come in with a victorious shot the Bible says enter into my gate with thanksgiving and unto my cause with praise oh magnify the Lord with us and let us exalt his name together oh somebody shout hallelujah I need to grab hold of your neighbor's hand and say neighbor oh you ought to lift your hands and shout hallelujah don't sit there and look cute you ought to dance before the king knowing that God's going to bring you out of whatever you in somebody shout hallelujah the Bible lets us know here hallelujah that amen when amen when the woman danced hallelujah when she danced before amen the king thank you lord what happened was amen when she danced amen before the king the king just gave her amen whatever she had and i'm here to let you know because jesus is the king of kings can you imagine when you danced in the world amen hallelujah when you dance down in the world satan was giving you things but when you start dancing for god don't you know that god will open up every window in heaven and pour out everything you need based upon your prayer and this this is what's wrong with the church today. The church today is only praising God based upon conditions. The church today only praise God when everything is going good. But what about praising God when you don't have a dime in your pocket? What about praising God when your body is wrecking with pain? What about praising God when everybody don't left you and you say, I will bless the Lord at all? Amen. You bless the Lord. You bless the Lord. Amen. He said, bless the Lord at all times. I don't want you just to bless me sometimes. I don't want you just to bless me. Amen. When you're feeling all good. I don't want you even to bless me. Amen. When everything's looking good. But when you ain't got your, no gas in your car, I'm still going to praise you. When my body is upset, I'm still going to praise you. When my head is hurting, I'm still going to praise you. When I don't have a job, I'm still going to praise you. When it look like I'm failing all my classes, I'm still going to praise you. Oh, you ought to grab your head, neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, you ought to still praise God. No matter what, clap your hands and give God praises and shout hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. Y'all better learn how to dance before God. God will take, amen, David. David was a whore. He said, the pastor said whore. Well, it's in the Bible. He said, oh, Lord, that pastor, he crazy. He talking about whore. Yeah, it's right there in the Bible. David killed somebody just to sleep with their wife. But God said, that he was a man after his heart. Well, how in the world can I get the heart of God? Amen. Let me tell you something. To get the heart of God, amen, David, in fact, was a praiser. You ought to shout hallelujah. I want you to get, amen, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse hallelujah. Uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, I'm sorry. And verse number 8. Hallelujah. Yes. Men pray everywhere. How does God want you to pray? Can y'all see that? The Bible says, I will therefore that men pray where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Lifting up. Lifting up. Not having your hands like this. Not having your hands like this or like this. But he said when you pray. And see, let me tell you something a little further. The world and God is so messed up to where, amen, men are not leading prayer services no more. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. And what happens is, amen, men get in the position, you know, man, y'all should be head and y'all should be leading stuff. That's what the Bible say. Amen. And a lot of, amen, men are not in position today, amen, because, you know, men don't even praise God no more. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Men have got to where they don't say, they don't even lift their hands in church anymore. Don't you know back in the day, amen, when the service was going on, they would have service out there on the street. Amen. They had that tambourine. Everybody just be dancing and praising God. And nowadays, people look like they done sucked on a lemon when they come to church. Everybody's faces are found up. Nobody want to lift their hands. Nobody want to give God glory. But in fact, he said, let everything. I just need 15 Bible readers. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath. If you got breath in your body, that's your opportunity to praise God. Let me let, 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 me, let me let you know something. Now, what happens is God, in fact, is doing a life check. And what happens is when I praise God, what I'm doing is thanking him for the life that's in me. I don't have life because I was so good. I got life because I'm supposed to praise. Y'all want to say hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Now, what happens, and the reason why Satan, amen, his job is to hinder your praise. Y'all ain't saying nothing. This is why, amen, when the service is going on, amen, it's so hard for you to get moving. Amen, the service is going on real high, and every now and again you will rock side to side and pat your foot. Amen, but you ought to make the devil mad. Every time you, listen, I don't care how bad your week was. I don't care how bad your year is. You ought to give God praises because you're still alive. Y'all ought to shout hallelujah. And I, I, I was told this a long time ago. Amen. They said, clothed mouths don't get fed. And I realized that people are not getting what they need from God because their mouth is still closed. But if you, no, I just need 25 of y'all. If you could just open up your big mouth and give God praises, I can guarantee that God will do something. Go down there, amen, to Ezekiel 28. Let me show you why Satan is mad. And this is why, amen, he, in fact, wants you to sit there and look crazy. Hallelujah. Satan wants you to sit there and not dance before the king. Amen. And some folks may say, well, I don't have no rhythm. Well, you ain't had no rhythm when you was doing the nay-nay. You didn't have no rhythm when you was doing the butterfly. You ain't had no rhythm when you was doing the percolator. Y'all ain't saying, you ain't have no rhythm when you was out there in the world, amen, dancing, but you just got with the program. Why in the world does it take somebody to be skilled and talented to praise God? I'm going to show y'all something. This is why Satan is mad. Read, a uh, son of man. Take up a lamentation yes. upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom, full of wisdom, perf and perfect in beauty. Uh -huh. Thou hast been in the Eden of, in the garden. Let's talk about Satan. Uh -huh. Of God, every precious stone was thy covering. Uh huh. The stardius, topaz, and the diamond. The burl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, uh -huh. and gold, the workmanship of thy ship of thy tabrets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. When Satan was created, God created him with pipes in him. Yes, my God. And those of you musicians, hey amen, you ever heard of a pipe organ? Got those pipes, and what happens is the wind goes through it and it makes a sound. Just like, amen, the uh, saxophone and the clarinet, all of these things take air to produce sound. And so what would happen is, is that when Satan would move, it would cause praise automatically to come out of him. Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. So he had tablets in him and of pipes and prepared in him when he was when God created him. So God created Satan. Actually, not only was he over music, but he was music. 
This is why you got to be careful what you listen to. Lord, I can't, I'm not going to work on that today. Somebody shout hallelujah. So what happens is, amen, Satan, in fact, was a piece of music. And so when Satan got, amen, above himself, amen, and wanted to exalt himself above God, what happened was God, in fact, took what was in Satan and placed it in man. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say, well, pastor, what are you talking about? Go down there to Genesis chapter 2, amen, and verse number 7. Now, uh-huh, read. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God. And the Lord God. Formed man. Formed man. Of the dust of the ground. He formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils. Now, the key part of God making man was what he blew in him. My God. Because he wanted to check to make sure that the instrument was working. Yes. God, I wish I had somebody. Lord, have mercy. God, he... God. This is why you got a eyes, you got nose, you got ears, and you got a mouth. All of these are holes. Just God, have mercy. Just like you got a clarinet. It's a whole pipe, but it got holes in it. And what happened was God did a trick. He put his fingers down there to check the eyes and blew in it and made sure it made a sound. And, and so God wanted to make sure that his instrument was working. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so what happened, God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. What happened was God had to make sure that what I created would praise me. That's why he said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That's why when you go down there to the doctors, it's something on the inside of you that produce sound. They call it a windpipe. Lord, help us in here. The windpipe, amen, gets air, but it produces a sound. And this is why Satan is upset with you because you are now the praise instrument that he used to be. No, I wish I had a 25 of y'all. What happened was God made us out of dirt and put a little pipe in us, amen, and blew in us. And amen. He said, testing, testing. One, two. He put that, Lord, have mercy. He poked the eyes, poked the nose, poked the ears, and touched the mouth and said, let me make sure that my instrument is still working. Let me blow it sound. I'm going to make sure that there's going to be a sound that come out of him. And this is why every baby that's born, it's not declared alive until until they make a sound. Lord, I wish I had somebody. Don't you know when you go down there to the hospital and the baby comes out the womb, they pluck the feet, they grab the head, they shake them, they rock them, they start shaking them to see what they're going to do. And once that baby make a sound, they declare the baby as a lie. And this is what I'm trying to tell you, strength of God. If you can just open up your mouth and give God praise, and if you can dance before the king, it's a sign to show that you're still alive. Aren't you glad that you're alive? Aren't you glad? glad that you were. Aren't you glad you still got to pray? It don't matter how bad your day goes. I still got to pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. You want to clap your hands and give God a praise and shout thank you Jesus. Isaiah. Glory to God. That's why I say it in mad. Then in the book of Hebrews he go far. Enough to say, he said, man, what is man that you are mindful of him? What what is this piece of dirt you done made and now you want him to praise you? You forgot about me. You forgot I had stones. Amen. You forgot I had all these emeralds. You forgot that I had gold. You forgot I had diamonds. But God said, listen, I'm not into the diamonds and the pearls. I'm not into, amen, the fashion. But I'm going to take a piece of dirt. And this is, God have mercy. This is why you shouldn't be so cute and looking at, looking at your rings and looking at your hair when you come to the house of God. Lord, I don't care if my hair is slayed, Lord, have mercy. When I leave out of here, I can have an afro walking out of here. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Because what I got on, it don't mean nothing to me while I'm praising God. My heels could be cute, but maybe I kick them things off and I... 
Somebody say hallelujah. It don't matter how good your tie is. Don't you see? I don't care nothing about this. When it got real good to me, I took it off. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. If we got to take your wig off the praise, you ought to do it. If you got to take your shoes off the praise, you ought to do it. Let everything that has been. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. It's your neighbor. I don't care how good I look. I take this tie off. I take my glasses off. I take my sewing out. I, I take my wig off, but I got to praise him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. It's your neighbor. I still got to praise him. Bible says this. Go down to Isaiah 61. Hallelujah. 61. And verse number one. The spirit of the Lord. God is upon me. Is upon me. Uh huh. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prisons of them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To comfort all that mourn. Uh -huh. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Uh -huh. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Look at somebody and say, God, turn it around. God, turn it around. Read, uh-huh. The oil of joy. The oil of joy. Morning. The oil of joy for morning. The oil of joy for morning. Anybody cried last night, last week, last month? I'm letting you know right now. If you can just praise God, God is changing that tear, amen, to some joy with some oil. And, and, and the reason why, God, I feel the Holy Ghost again. The reason why God said, I'm going to make an exchange for oil and morning. Morning deals with tears. And when tears dry up, amen, it's to get your little ash on your face, amen. But God said, amen, you can wipe that off and it'll leave. If, if the water from the tear get in your clothes, it'll leave. But if I can just put some oil on you. And what happens is, I don't care how much you wash oil, it's still going to stay there. I don't, God, I wish I had the right church. I don't care, listen, I don't work in restaurants for years. I done changed some grease, amen. What's that grease? Amen. Get on my clothes, amen. That's it. Amen. I can keep washing it and washing it, but the oil gonna stick. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need to get the oil for my morning. He said, I'm gonna give you some oil. Amen. See, oil and water, amen, they fight us. They don't get together. They don't, they, they don't blend real good. They, amen. They fight us. You put them in the same jar, you shake it up, they're going to separate. So God said, I'm going to take those tears that you've cried and I'm going to exchange it with some oil. And that next tear you cry, it's going to be tears of joy and not tears of sorrow. Watch this read, uh-huh. The garment of praise. I'm going to give you the garment of I pray. Now, you know what a garment is, don't you? The garment is clothing. He said, I'm going to give you some clothes so that you could praise and read, uh huh. For the spirit of heaviness. Now, every time you get heavy, God said, Go in the closet. Somebody shout hallelujah. Every time you get heavy, just go in your closet and change your clothes. Amen. Say, look, you got to be like Clark Kent. Amen. You said, all right. It's getting heavy down there. Let me go back. Now I'm Superman. God, amen, said, if you could just go change your clothes from the heaviness and just put on that garment of praise. Amen. Read, uh-huh. For the spirit of heaviness. For that spirit of heaviness. And this is the problem. Every time the spirit of heaviness is here, it needs to be a praise that's produced. Yeah. Whenever you feel that heaviness, it's time to praise God. Because in that praise, see, that, 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 what happens is praise creates an anointing. See, he talks about the exchange, the, the, the oil of joy, amen. And the oil, amen, is in fact, deals with anointing. And it is the anointing that destroys 
yoke. So every yoke that's present, all you got to do is praise God. Yes, my God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's so bad out there now. Amen. People getting jobs. Uh, amen. People uh, 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 are uh, um, uh, putting up. You'll get $1,000 bonus or signing bonus to get jobs and all this stuff like that now, man. It's all right to praise God at your job now. They ain't going to fire you now. Amen. Yeah. They need y'all ain't saying nothing. You can take your, take your little five minute, ten minute break and go ahead and praise God. Let me tell you something. Your, your praise is not limited to the house of God. But when you come to the house of God, you must praise God. But when you go to work, listen, it's all right to take your break and praise God. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. While you're at school, it's all right when you get your recess to go ahead and pray. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so what happens is we have a man taking the praise out of the church because amen we're worried about who's looking at us oh somebody ought to shout hallelujah see I'm going to tell you this story I don't have time to go there amen I don't have time there but David amen he had such a strong praise on him amen that his garments start coming off he David was praising God so strong, amen. Listen, what happened was, amen, David started praising God because they had got God's presence to come back. And what happened was these folks stole the Ark of the Covenant, which was a representation of God's presence. And they took it, but when David and them got it back, every few steps they started praising God. And what happened, see, they understood because I got the presence of God, because the presence of God is here, I know how to praise my God. See, the sanctuary isn't really the sanctuary anymore. Remember I taught that lesson on how the sanctuary, we should treat it as if it's God's house. And how nowadays people don't treat God's house like it's his house. They treat it like it's their house. Y'all ain't saying that. You know, uh, uh, got your feet up on the, you know, Hanging out like we're hanging out in here playing spades and oh, this, this is God's house. When a house is sanctified and consecrated to the Lord, it becomes his. So this is why he say when enter into my gates, enter into when you come before me, you ought to have a thankful heart and then you ought to praise me. And when we don't praise God, amen, it's an indication that you're full of yourself. Say, well, I, 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 don't, I don't sound that good to sing. Let me show you something. Go down there to uh, Psalm 100. People say, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't have the prettiest voice. I don't, I don't sing like Journey. I can't. I can't do that. I, I, I can't do those runs. I can't sing like Christine. I can't sing like Mariah. I don't have that in me. That don't mean you can't sing. Just don't get the mic. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why y'all looking deep? It's all right to smile in the house of the Lord. The Bible talk about laughter good, good for the soul. So the Bible says this. 101 of Division Song. Read, uh huh. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful what? Noise. Noise. Can I be honest with you? Can I tell y'all this? I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. God is not in a quiet church. Amen. God, he, he ain't in there. God don't dwell in the quiet church because noise does something to God. Yes. Can I tell you why we got to make a joyful noise? Because how far away God can be, he still want to hear something from yes. you. Amen. Bible said, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. God is a high. That's why he talk about high sounding symbols because he is a high God. Yes, he, is. he wants you to take your volume a little higher. Somebody shout hallelujah. So the Bible says make a joyful noise unto who? The Lord. The Lord. If you're doing it for God, it don't have to sound good. Amen. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. If you're singing unto God, it, you don't even have to do no runs. 
Woo. We got somebody that said, be you and sing. Be you and sing. Just sing to God. I might tell you to go down there to Sunday's best and embarrass yourself, but we want you to sing to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Read, uh huh. All ye lands. All ye lands. Now, we must understand something. When we're standing up and where you live at and where your house at, that's on land. And he said, all the lands. Everywhere you at, you ought to make some noise for God. Don't limit yourself just to the house of God. Some of y'all don't even praise God here. Don't limit yourself to the house of God, but wherever you are, you ought to praise God. Read, uh-huh. Come on. Serve the Lord with gladness. He said, now, when you're serving God. Now, can I, can I tell you something? When you're praising God, it's a service unto God. So he said, while you're doing it, you ought to be glad to praise him like that. While you're praising God, lifting him up, you ought to be glad. Serve the Lord with gladness, uh huh. Come before his presence with singing. I want you to sing, uh huh. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He is God. It is he that hath made us. Now we got to understand why he's causing us to praise him because we didn't make ourselves. Yes, sir. He said that, I, Lord, have mercy. Every time that iPhone come on, there's an apple or an indication to show what the logo is who made the phone. So every time you wake up, you need to make sure your logo still working, your mouth. Somebody missed that. You ought to make sure that your logo is working, which is your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. When you wake up, you need to make sure, open your mouth, give God praise. Lord, I praise you, God, I thank you. You know, God talks about being magnified. You know what magnified means? You ever had a, 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 amen, a magnifying glass? And when you look at it, some of y'all got some more now. When you look at it, when you look through it, y'all ain't saying nothing. When you look through it, it makes things what? Bigger. <coughs> so something that perceived to be small, amen, when I look at it, it becomes bigger because I have something to magnify it with. You are supposed to magnify God with your mouth. Say, so, well, how could I make God bigger? Well, when was the last time you told somebody about what he did for you? Yes. And when was the last time you told somebody what God did for you? However, it wasn't anything materialistic. Amen. When was the last time you said, I just, you know what? God woke me up this morning. Yes. You know what? Back in the day, and I got to move out your way, but back in the day, they used to have something called testimony service. Yes, Lord. And what would happen is, sister, is that after somebody sung a song, then somebody would give it up and they'll say, give it unto to God who's the head of my life. Ah. See, I just thank God for life, health, and strength. Thank God for having the activities of my limbs. Thank him for the blood running warm in my vein. I just appreciate God today. And then they just sit down. You say, wow. So nowadays, the only way people testify is if they get a vehicle. Only time people praise God is when they get a car. You mean to tell me that you can't praise God for the two feet that you got that's walking around? You can't praise God. You, you know, see, see, sometimes you need to look at other people that's not fortunate like you are. Sometimes you got to look at people that don't even have arms and hands and legs. Y'all ain't saying nothing. People that can't even see. People that can't even talk. People that can't even hear. But God allowed you to have this. You ought to praise him. All right, read. Uh -huh. Let me get out your way. Uh -huh. And not we ourselves. We ain't make ourselves. Uh -huh. We are his people. We are who people? His people. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Uh-huh. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. He said, when you enter into my gates, thank me. Uh-huh. And into his courts with praise. Uh-huh. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth through all generations. All right, now go to Psalm 150, and, I, and I'm closing here. Give me two more verses. And I, I, I want you all to see that God wants us to dance. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And to be honest, amen, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I don't know about you, but there are a myriad of languages in the world. Amen. But there is, in fact, a language 
that you can speak without your mouth. Uh. And it's called body language. Yeah. Lord have mercy. And see what body language do, it could speak. And if the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, every now and again, you ought to let your body speak, showing that Lord, I've been redeemed. Somebody shout hallelujah. And you know what redeemed means, right? It means that you were bought back, and you was bought with a price, and God paid that price on Calvary's cross. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I'll read, uh huh. The Bible says, Praise you, the Lord. Uh huh. Praise God in his sanctuary. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, neighbor. we are, we are. in. Yeah. His sanctuary. sanctuary. Read. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Uh huh. Praise him for his mighty act. Uh huh. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. If you know that God is not just a great God, but he's an excellent great God, God. we should praise him. We minimize God and it shows by the way we praise him. Read. Uh huh. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Uh -huh. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Uh -huh. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Timbrel and what? Dance. Dance. You know what the timbrel is? That's like a tambourine. Except praise him with a tambourine, but don't leave the dance out. Yes. When you dance, I mean, when you praise him, go ahead and put a dance with it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you, we, we, we know that Satan is in competition with God. That's why the world got dances coming out every year. Uh -huh. Why can't we stick with the praise that God has given us? Yes. Can I be honest with you? Don't get mad at me. We got our own dance. Yes, we do. <laughs> and our dance isn't the world's dance. Oh, oh y'all ain't saying that. Yeah. Amen. We don't do the electric slide. Yes, oh, Lord, I'm about to get in trouble here. Amen. We don't do the, amen, the hopscotch and the nay nay and the, y'all know all these, what's these new dances? Superman and the, what all the rest of that stuff? Y'all young people know what I'm talking about. What, what's the what's them dances called? Don't ask, don't ask shine now. It's called what? The roll, the woe, the soldier boy, and what else? Every year is a new dance coming out in the world. And everybody in the whole world is dancing to the dance. But when we come to the house of God, we act like we can't move. We get stiff. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't saying that. We get tight. We get dignified. We act like we got all type of structure. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We're going to leave you out, Mike. They got square dancing out there, too. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Let me make sure we got everybody. All right. Now. Read, uh huh. Praise him with the string instruments. Praise him with the string instruments. That's the bass guitar, the lead guitar, instruments, the banjo, the ba whatever, banjo, whatever they call every instrument that has a string. Amen. And David, he played an instrument with a string as well. And see, when David played the instrument that was a string instrument, it chased demons. This is why the devil don't want, this is why you got churches down. They, they don't want you, they only want you to have music in the church. They don't believe that music belongs in the church. They omit all the scriptures that say <laughs> praise them with a timbrel and dance. And they try to say that music came in under the law. That's a lie. Music started in the book of Genesis chapter 4. I ain't got time to go there. Amen, I know the Bible. All right, now, the Bible says, Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and what? Organs. Organs. Uh huh. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. He wants you to praise him upon loud cymbals. So I don't want the cymbal to sound soft, but I want it to be loud. Because as God, I enjoy noise because what it does is it, 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 it invokes my presence. Oh my God. Read, uh-huh. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Not only the loud cymbals, but the high-sounding ones. God said, listen, when you make a sound, I want to hear it. Stop being so quiet when you come to church. Yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read, uh-huh. Let everything. Let everything. That have breath. Let everything. Now, we must understand this, and I, I got to get out your way. The Bible says, let everything. Yeah. 
which is not limited to humans. That's right. <laughs> Can I tell you something? You know how the horse make a sound? Y'all ain't saying that. Can I be honest? The horse make a sound because he got to praise God. You know the rooster when they cock a doodle do? You know what that is? That's a, y'all ain't saying, I'm being out. That's a praise. Even whales got to praise God. You ever seen Free Willy had came to the top? He had to make a sound. Because, y'all ain't saying nothing. The hummingbirds, every bird, they tweet. They have a, the fowl of the air. Every animal. Eat. Listen, I told y'all the story a couple of years ago. I met a raccoon. We didn't shake hands or nothing like that, but he was in a cage. And the young man was showing me. I said, man, what you got going on there? He had a raccoon, and he would hit the cage, and the raccoon was barking like a dog. Wow. I didn't even know raccoons made sounds. But it gave me the understanding that every living thing has a sound. You said, well, what about the plants and the trees? They make sounds, too, when the wind blow. God. When the wind is blowing, amen, you can hear the trees. Can I go a step further? Because there's life in water. When you go down to the Tybee Beach, amen, you can hear, amen, the ocean making sounds. Because everything that has breath has to praise God. And if I go a step further, when you go down into Genesis chapter number one, it talks about the spirit of God being on the waters. Yeah. That's why they're still making sound because the spirit ain't never left. Yeah. Yeah. That's why people like to go to the water to remain calm. When you're having a rough day, you run some water, it'll change your atmosphere. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Go down there to the beach and take a little walk and just listen to the water. Amen. Listen to the waves. You say, wow. Your understanding start changing. What you was feeling, you couldn't feel anymore. Yes. Let everything that have breath praise God. Uh huh. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I want you to keep this in your mind. Yes. That when we come together and assemble ourselves together and even when we're not assembled your job is praise and dance before God and watch what he does for you and let me tell you this amen as I stated earlier amen I know some people are looking for the right beat the the the, the correct movement but let me let you know something amen your beat don't have to be right your your amen you don't have to have rhythm to praise God because I believe sometimes when we come to the house of the Lord, amen, we're looking for the rhythm. But I believe when David was praising God, I don't think he was on beat or, or rhythm. He just was praising God because he felt like, Lord, if I could just praise you. You told me that you were living my praise, so I'm going to praise you so you can be there right there with me. And if you've never felt the hand of God or if you've never felt God's presence, I dare you to just praise God you've never felt him before i encourage you amen to start praising god like you've never praised him before amen and amen can i be honest with you you don't even need no music to praise god i'm gonna say this the lord told me this a couple years ago our life of living amen is already synonymous to praise and God even when he made man he already put a praise machine in him not only did he breathe in him amen but he caused a heart to be there and in order to know that somebody is living the heart got to play a beat and so now every time you go to find out everything going on with your body and you check your blood, but also they make sure that the heart is beating. Yeah. And that beat, in fact, is a sound with the life that's in you to show that you must praise God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. You can stand. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we appreciate you today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for imparting in us. Lord, I pray now, God, 
that you cover, protect, and keep our minds stayed on you. Keep us in a perfected peace, Lord. God, I pray now, Lord, that you help us to praise you. Even the more, God, even when we don't feel like praising, Lord, you make us praise. Let us remember, God, that we got life and we must praise you. God, continue to produce a praise out of our lips. Continue to produce a praise out of our life. Lord, help us in this hour, Lord, to praise you. Lord, let us understand that it's not about us. We didn't create ourselves. We are, amen, a product and a creation of you. And Lord, I pray, God, that you cover our mind, touch our hearts, keep us covered now. God, even as we depart from here today, Lord, you just stay with us. God, the next service we have, God, allow a radical praise to be with us. Lord, the next service we assemble ourselves together, God, even tonight when we have our night service, Lord, I pray that your presence is so strong here, God, that it will cause us to lift you up. It will cause us to magnify you. It will cause us to extol you. It will cause us to exalt you, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for the life that you've given us. And God, will forever praise you to show that we are thankful and appreciative of what you've done in us. Lord, we God, God, we thank you in your name, Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says this, and, 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 and we're closing. The Bible says, except the man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Some people believe that belief alone will save you, but your belief alone will not save you. You believe it in Jesus will not save you. The Bible says faith without works is being dead. It's dead, being alone. So you just believe it ain't going to get you nowhere. Belief starts it. Amen. Except the man is born of the water. So you must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to be baptized. And I know sometimes we look around and say, I'm not ready. I don't know if I'm ready to do this. I don't know if I, I'm going to wait till I get this age. I'm going to wait till I stop doing this, stop doing that. Listen, you have to be baptized because baptism removes the endemic sin. And that endemic sin, in fact, is transmitted sin on your life. You say, well, Pastor, what is a transmitted sin? How did it transmit? When Adam sinned, Every man, the Bible told us that uh, sin passed on every man by one man's sin. So every man that's born got sin on him. Say, so how is that? How could that be? Just like a person, a mother could have HIV and the daddy have HIV and they have a child. That child ain't never did nothing in his life but could come out with HIV positive. Same concept. And today, my brother, today, my sister, is your day. You can start this journey with the Lord to be baptized in his name. If there's one today that want to be baptized in Jesus' name, you could come. You could come. If you thought about it, contemplate it in your spirit. Say, I do want to be baptized. I just don't know right now. And I don't, I don't know how this goes. I don't know why I should. And then some, I'll be honest with you, the world got the wrong baptism. They baptize in titles. They baptize in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And the Bible tells us to baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 19 that there were some brothers that didn't receive the Holy Ghost. And they asked them, said, well, how was you baptized? He didn't receive the Holy Ghost. How were you baptized? He said, we were baptized unto John's baptism. And he said, well, you must be baptized in Jesus' name. And they were baptized again because they wanted to do the right thing. Amen. If that's you today, you could come. Hallelujah. If that's you, you could come. Amen. Clap your hands and give God praises today. <laughs>